Welcome back everybody to the After Hours Gaming League Season 3. We're in we're in week number three as well in our match between Intel and Palantir. Starting over at the bottom left-hand side is our red Protoss player for Team Palantir. It is Filthy Rake, who is the, the captain of the team actually, and I'm told he uh, doesn't actually play too often in the After Hours Gaming League. He's actually undefeated so far, which is, uh, well, I mean, he's played one game, but that's still, he won that game, and, and he's undefeated. That's uh, that's Filthy Rake's claim to fame, and we are certainly none to take that away from him. It looks like, uh, well, he, we'll see what he is able to do here against a, uh, a powerful a pro, a Terran player here. He was actually previously a Zerg in Wings of Liberty, I believe, but uh, playing for Intel over in the, bo the top right-hand side is our blue Terran player is Jehovah, and of course we'll keep an eye on, uh, as we said, some of the, in, in, we said in the previous game, seeing uh, some of the interesting new units that are in Heart of the Swarm, perhaps we'll see some of those today. I have been told by Filthy Rake that he does like a little bit of Oracle action, so we'll see if that comes along from him. Um, but of course, uh, no no cheese to start off. This map, not too uh, not too fancy for cheese if you want to try that out on, on uh, this one. You can do some interesting things in PvP with can of cheese, but we're not in, in that particular matchup just yet. But as we can see, Filthy Rake going to have a quick look through. is going to be able to see that his opponent's gotten started on that barracks. He does also have the gas started as well. Now, we did mention in the previous game, uh, uh, as we saw, the Reapers have made a little bit of a comeback. Now, they're not necessarily a strong, powerful unit that they once were in, uh, you know, uh, probably about a month ago in Heart of the Swarm, where you would see quite a lot of Reapers being used in almost any matchup because of their speed buff and uh, the changes to the way that they're, uh, of course, they get the high ground vision and the, um, the heal over time when they're not in combat. Of course, with the changes so that they are now a little bit faster but do less damage and no longer have the, uh, I believe, it was called Battle Awareness, I believe, uh, Battlefield Awareness, I believe that's what it was called, to spot up on the high ground. But they are now very, very quick and are able to be utilized as very nice scouts. Now, you can throw them around and do some really good, uh, do some really good stuff with them right at the start of a game, and you won't necessarily destroy mineral lines like they once did, but you can get some really good scouting off. Perhaps if you catch a player off guard, you might be able to get through a couple of their workers in the mineral line. But um, yeah, you, you you can like you wouldn't you wouldn't have been able to do it before where you would throw just a couple of workers at a, at a reaper to try and kill it. Um, that would never work against a player who had some de even even just semi decent micro. But now you can do that because they uh, they don't actually do as much damage, and it's not too bad in the end. But I think we will have uh, a couple of Reapers coming out from Jehovah right now. He's in fact got them uh, reactoring out. If, is that a word? I, I think that's a word. Um, so he's going to have a couple of those out on the map already. As we did see, the Marine did catch the scouting scouting probe of uh, Filthy Rake and was able to get rid of that. Looks like we will have a second gas as well. So it's not going to be too quick of an expansion from Jehovah. He's going to follow this up perhaps with a couple more Reapers. We'll see. Uh, just after this, it looks like we are going to get a factory going down. Yep, it is a factory. Two Reapers coming out straight away. Going to jump down on that front door balcony of the base here. This is, of course, one of the big features of Antigua Shipyard is the fact that you can jump straight up here with with uh, units like Reapers of course the Colossi can walk down there as well their own little catwalk that they can jump down and he is going to come through we'll keep an eye on how much damage he is able to get it looks like Filthy Rake uh, completely unaware of that for the moment you can see how much damage they uh, well how little damage they do compared to what they once were and it looks like Filthy Rake is uh, finally reacting to this unfortunately he only has a couple of Zealots at, out at the start and the Zealots not the most fantastic unit to utilize to try Try and take down Reapers, and in fact, is he ooh, almost gets us the uh, the surround on the Reapers there with the probes. But unfortunately, uh, there has been quite a sizable amount of damage done. Good target fire from uh, Jehovah there, and has been able to get out of there. And as we can see, you can hear the sound. The Reapers are healing up. They're all good right now. But there is that Oracle opening here from our Protoss player, Filthy Rake. It looks like there is going to be a double star port coming out from Jehovah. So he's going to have uh, a few units out to defend. I would assume at least one. Maybe two Vikings will come out to defend against that. The Oracle actually coming across to try and see if he can deal with the uh, with the Reapers and is able to get the, gets one. The second one is gonna 
Oh, wait, no, he does get it. Alright, cool. He is able to finally finish that off. The Mothership Core does come out, and we will see that Filthy Rake should be relatively well protected against anything like that if it were to occur again. But as we can see, it looks like we are going to have what I would assume is going to be a Hellbat delivery force coming along with a medevac uh, probably going to get started up. There it is, a starport fixing up a medevac right now. There is also a Viking on the way. This is some. This is like a really interesting part of, uh, of this particular matchup, and also in uh, in TVZ as well, I've noticed in a little bit of HOTS, you do see Terrans stay on one base a little bit longer because they can get a little bit more damage done. We can see that uh, that uh, Jehovah was able to get six workers killed in total. Not too bad at all. Does keep him in the lead for the moment, which is not too bad for a Terran, given that they do have the mules to be to add in some uh, extra mineral income as well. And we, we will see that it is going to be a Hellion base play, the Armoury finishing up just in time we'll probably see the hellion switch over to hell bats there they are keep in mind these guys while being mechanical are also biological so these medevacs are able to heal them up if need be and we'll probably see him try and just dump them straight into the mineral line and with their uh, with their greater damage that the hell bats have now one of the recent patches did change it so that they don't get the bonus blue flame damage but they do have 30 damage to lights already straight off the bat and that is uh, that is certainly something to uh, be worried about if you are a Protoss player and suddenly you've got Hellbats in your mineral line. But we do see three oracles heading across for Filthy Rake and there is that drop just dumping them straight in. The Photon Overcharge goes on the Nexus here for Filthy Rake. is going to help defend that but at what cost? At what cost? 22, 23, 24, 25. It continues to grow here and Filthy Rake's mineral line has been absolutely decimated there. The Photon Overcharge will try and finish off the Medivac but is not able to really get anything done. A couple of Widow Mines now popping out for uh, Jehovah as well. The Oracle's now getting inside the mineral line but not really getting too much, not too much focus there from Filthy Rake, unfortunately. The Oracles are able to get a few kills out, but I mean, they get cleaned up quite quickly, and that is not an even tally right now. Seven worker kills to 25, I don't think that is where Filthy Rake wants to be right now. He's unfortunately going to be in a, a little bit of an uphill battle. It is much like what happened in our previous game, where we had Preeminence do an absolutely incredible amount of damage done right at the start with his early Oracles. However, the tables of turn. Now it has turned around to be uh, a lot of Hellbats doing some damage right at the start for Jehovah on Team Intel and P Palantir's Filthy Rake is going to be the one with an uphill battle. So We'll see what he's able to do here. He does have a sizable force of, uh, you know, some early zealots and sentries down here at the natural. But, I mean, that is not where the threat is going to come from. It looks like Jehovah is getting ready to throw down another Hellbat delivery inside the main base. He's got four all ready to go. The Mothership Core is here. She doesn't... Now she does. I was about to say, she doesn't have enough energy for a photon overcharge, but she does now. We'll see if that gets started. The shiny disco ball just floating around inside the main base at the moment. Probably doesn't want to head out too far, but... As we can see, we've got Jehovah actually continuing to stick with this interesting sort of opening, but the, the Hellbats do get inside. They get more damage done. This, this mineral line completely devoid of workers right now. There is one now coming in. He's a very daring probe. And even, as you can see, the Hellbats, with the assistance of the Medevac to throw down some heals, are even able, able to take care of Stalkers, which is nothing too short of uh, useful for a Terran player as well. And the Mothership Core does come along. Sentries are able to help defend that as well. But I mean, the worker tally at right at this moment for Filthy Rake sitting at 9. He's in a very, very awkward spot. Looks like he is going to try and go for a possible, like a small gateway attack, but the problem is he's going to have absolutely no resources to try and help out with this. A mineral, uh, uh, mineral, mineral mine in the middle. No, it's actually a widow mine in the middle. Takes care of one of the, uh, one of the sentries there from Filthy Rake, and that's, that removes one of his forces as well. Looks like the SCV was able to get away. A couple of bunkers being constructed Constructed at the front for Jehovah. He's got a widow mine here as well. He's continuing to produce some more of those very powerful hellbats as we saw them before. Even able to deal with things like the uh, like the stalkers as well, which is pretty cool for a Terran player. But 
You know, situation lies at Filthy Rake sitting at a total of 13 workers right now. His opponent, Jehovah, sitting at 33 of his own. A couple of medevacs still continuing to come out for Jehovah. But it's interesting, he's sort of switched back across to a bio style now. So he's switched it into uh, what started out an, an interesting sort of semi-mech style. I don't want to say it was a mech because there really wasn't too much of a mech following to it because there were those uh, a few marines and marauders at the start. Of course, the medevacs there as well. But I mean, in all... For all intents and purposes, it was. Now we're going to switch it back to some bio with these, uh, with the racks getting started. Uh, Stim has now finished up. We got Marines and Marauders on the way. A Viking cluster has now uh, just moved through the top section of the map. I'm not sure what the plan for them is. Looks like they are just trying to find any stray oracles that might be around on the map. Not to mention any bases. It's a big feature of this map, Antigua Shipyard, is uh, the only bases that are actually, uh, you know, not on the edge of the map are these two mineral lines just uh, in the center. Of course, the gold base is there. Not really uh, a very a very easy thing to take, but of course, they are in the center, which means they won't be scouted out by things like uh, the medevacs and these Vikings that are out. But of course, we're not really going to get that far. I have a funny feeling that uh, Jehovah is going to be able to finish this game up way before we actually get to that stage, but he is going to continue along. More racks are being built down at the natural here as well. We got a total of six racks available for production here for Jehovah. He's also got that factory with the reactor. We've now got double starport with reactor as well. And it looks like another Hellbound drop is going to proceed through the southern side of the map. Jehovah just continuing to absolutely decimate his opponent's mineral line. 39 worker kills in total for him. Everything is looking very good for Jehovah right now. And I think he's about to get prepared for that drop inside the natural. Medivac sitting down here very calmly. Of course, we've got a lot of map control for Jehovah as well. He's got Vikings around the map that have been doing a good job in clearing out any possible uh, units that might be around. And there they go. There's Napalm spray just jetting all over the place there and he is able to get a few more kills not able to target down some of the rest of the pros but he is doing his best to get rid of some of them and uh, more and more work is going down that is going to take a filthy rate down to a total of wow that is going to take him down to 26 workers in total he's uh, boosted it back up from where it previously once was at a very minimal total of nine but I mean he is still in dire straits right now as we can see full mining going on at the natural base of Jehovah right now. We'll probably see him look towards a third base very soon if he doesn't actually just go for this uh, a very strong two base push at the moment. The unit count of Filthy Rakes sitting at five sentries, five zealots, three stalkers and the mothership core. So, you know, <laughs> there isn't really too much here. It looks like uh, Jehovah is about to get started with the push. He has finished up with the uh, with the combat shield. Oh, no, it's it's uh, just on the way, sorry. The combat shield's around about halfway done. Concussive Shells is now finished up for the Marauders as well. We've got plus one weapons already done for these bio units. Of course, they do have plus one on their armor as well, just on the way. And with uh, more and more units now pouring down the map, we've got uh, Jehovah just... Uh, he's just probably going to rally stuff down, I'd say. Yeah, he's just rallying everything down. He's going to go for the push very soon. If uh, Filthy Rake has any hope, it's going to rely on some extremely fantastic force fields. Uh, you know, we're talking about some gorgeous uh, force field donuts that we'll probably have to see out of him if he is going to have any hope because he has no real splash damage at the moment. And I mean, you know, there are some ways to pull off no splash damage wins against bio units, uh, bio based clumps like this, but I mean, it is extremely difficult, especially at this stage of the game. So he is, uh, it looks like our Intel player Jehovah is going to be able to push in here and get some very, very sizable damage done, if not a win. First, he's going to clean up one of the pylons on the edge of the base and now is going to look to head straight inside. What does our Palantir player have? Not really too much. Still, just a very minimal gateway force. One on the armor for the upgrades. That is all he has right now. Looks like he was attempting to get some more uh, more tech on the way, but unfortunately, with a barely mining natural base and, you know, the main has been uh, sort of almost non-functional for quite a lot of this game, he is going to be in quite a lot of trouble trying to defend this, but it looks like the final battle will commence Hellbats at the front, Marauders there as well. Stim goes up. Keep in mind, the Hellbats will get healed up by those Medivacs as well. And with the uh, with the Photon Overcharge down, it looks like we will see Filthy Rake just hold for a moment. But, 
you know, it's it's not going to last too long. The photon overcharge doesn't, it, it only lasts for uh, around about uh, 60 seconds, so it's not too long, especially when you've got a Terran building up forces just outside your main base here. So he is uh, just biding his time. It looks like he wants to get a Void Ray out. We'll see if Filthy Rake is going to be able to add that in and try and utilize that, but with a few Vikings up in the air. In fact, it's only just four Vikings, and I mean, that's going to be enough to deal with this. And he is trying to warp in at the back. A three Zealot warp in, going to try and come through to the third base this is actually completely unprotected but the issue is is that this is going on jehovah now pushing in another photon overcharge going down on the nexus a little bit of uh marine marauder micro there with that stim the medivacs providing the heals the last of the gateway forces will fall of course the vikings cleaning up that void ray up in the sky and that is going to be it for our Palantir player, Filthy Rake, the captain, coming out. Unfortunately, his undefeated streak is going to come to an end, and we will see him tap out in just a second. There it is, a GG from Filthy Rake. Very well played by Jehovah, doing those Hellbat drops, which have been extremely popular in Heart of the Swarm, especially in TVP. So we'll go into game number three in just a moment. Of course, this puts the scores at 2-0. Intel up at the moment. If they are able to win the next game, then we will see them proceed and take week three in a victory against Palantir, or perhaps will the next player from Palantir be able to come back and bring out a win and start the, uh, the revival for Team Palantir. We'll go into that game in just a moment. 